One of the best things about the topic, the nature of proof, is that the knowledge and skills you develop in it are very versatile, which is to say you can apply everything you've learned about uh, converses and contrapositives and logic and deduction, you can apply them to almost anything which is incredibly powerful to be able to have a skill which doesn't just apply to ooh, this little category of problems uh, means that there's incredible power in that technique or that strategy. But one of the worst things about the topic The Nature of Proof is that the knowledge and skills you develop in it are incredibly versatile which means at times you will encounter a question that doesn't look familiar at all. It's not like, oh, I know this question, I just have to do these four steps and out the answer pops. And that might be the feeling that you're getting when you have a look at this question. Uh, starting to read it, you might even think, do I know anything about this topic? Is this something I'm supposed to be able to do? The answer is, yes you can, with a little bit of an introduction. So we're going to have a go at this. It is going to turn into a very classical proof by mathematical induction once we've set it up. Uh, and then also, just for a bonus, uh, I'm going to show you another way to prove this result, which doesn't have anything to do with induction, um, it, but it does contact, uh, it does interface with some of the other mathematics you've been learning recently. So let's dive in. Prove by mathematical induction that every set with n members has 2 to the n subsets. And then they give you this hint which doesn't mean anything until you can make sense of what this sentence means. Uh, what are we talking about when we mean sets, subsets, all that kind of thing? Think all the way back to series and sequences. When we introduced that topic to you, the whole idea was that uh, we had sequences, you know, a string of numbers in a particular order, the order does matter, and you can turn a sequence into a series by adding up everything in the sequence. So that's why the Fibonacci sequence is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and so on. Um, it's not a series, uh, but then we can talk about um, a geometric series, which is adding up, you know, a bunch of terms which have a common ratio. Now, that's how you go from a sequence to a series, you add uh, all of the terms, to go from a sequence to a set, uh, it's still the same idea. You still have a collection of objects, but what you take out is the sequential nature of it, uh, which is to say, one, one, two, three, five, if I just like put all those numbers into a bag and jumbled them up, you wouldn't know what order, which one was first and which one was last. Uh, well, there is no last, that's an infinite sequence, bad example. Uh, but in a set, the whole idea is that we've jumbled them up, we don't really care about the order. So um, the typical sort of textbook definition is, a set set is a collection of unordered objects. In this case they're using the word members. So if you have a set that has n members in it, what is a subset? Well the easiest way to explain what a subset is, is to show you some of them. So suppose I had a set with two members. We'll start off nice and simple and I'm going to call those members A and B. What is a subset? Well, a subset is um, the different sets I can make within the members of this set. So for example, um, this whole set, uh, I'm just going to call it with my uh, set notation here, open a brace, A comma B, that's the whole set uh, including all of its elements, its members, but I can actually make little like selections within this set and we call those subsets because they sit within this one. So for example, I could say a, the set that includes A, that's a subset of A and B. Uh, B is also its own subset. Um, I could say, for example, that A and B, um, that's another subset within that, it just includes everything. Uh, and then there's one last sneaky subset that's hiding, which is there is always a subset that doesn't include any of the members that you've got there. We call it the empty set, right? So if I sort of tabulate this, I already wrote down A comma B, that's kind of the set that includes everything. Uh, then I had individually A uh, as a set and then B as a set. And then weirdly, the set which has nothing in it, the empty set, is just some curly braces and as the name suggests, there's nothing in them, right? How many subsets are there? And the answer is there are four, which is two squared. So uh, what I've shown is that, you know, when you've got two members, you've got two squared subsets. And I could do this again if I had to think about what would happen if I introduced a third. Now in fact, uh, a third member I should say. Now that's actually going to be my segue into trying to understand what is this hint that they've given us and then how can we use it to assemble our proof by induction. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, when we read this, it says when a new member is added to a K member set, then every subset of the resulting K plus one member set either contains or does not contain the new number. All right. I'm going to use the same trick that I used before to understand this very vague uh, abstract algebraic language. I'm just going to put some numbers on here. So I'm imagining if K were two, right? So when a new member is added to a two member set, and this is my two member set right here, A and B, then every subset of the resulting three member set either contains or does not contain the new member. So I'm going to introduce a new member into this set, I guess using A and B, I'm just going to write the next one as C. And I want to think about the fact that, well, now I've got a whole bunch of extra new subsets that are available to me, right? How many will they include? Well, if this result is true, I've got three members in this set, so I should expect to find two to the power of three, eight subsets. Now, hopefully the first thing you notice is that I've got these, uh, these four subsets that I got from before, and all four of these subsets are included in the first, uh, in, in this new set, right? All of the subsets of my two member subset, member set are part of my three member set, okay? But I can then add on more, um, starting with the fact that either um, these new sets either contain or do not contain C. So all of these subsets here, they don't contain C. And so what I can do is I can say, I can add on a, a set that corresponds to all four of these sets just by adding C to that set. So let's actually start from uh, from the top here, right? We had A and B as one of our sets. What happens when I add C to that? Um, I guess, I need some more colors here, let's go with say blue. That's gonna be A, B, and C. So uh, this would be the subset that I get. Uh, there's, there's that, what happens when I add C to that one. In fact, I'll even write it down. I'll write it down here. So I'm gonna have A and then B and then C. Then, um, going in order, I'm going to have the A set including C as well. So that's going to look something like, I'm so drastic, we're going to run out of colors. Uh, A and C, like that. So I'm going to write this underneath. A comma C. Uh, I've also got, just adding along, I've got the B set and add that to C as well. So that would look like this. So I'm going to get B comma C. And then the last set, <clears throat> the last subset I should say, is gonna be the empty set, the empty subset plus C. So um, that's just going to be, let's do it in black because you've got to see that. This one right here, okay? So that's going to be C. And hopefully you can convince yourself by looking through, maybe you draw up a three member set yourself and try and think of, is there any subset that I'm missing? And I can know conclusively, um, because I've sort of done this by exhaustion, right? Um, I've got the original four, and then I've got this new four, which gives me the two cubed, the eight subsets that I was hoping for. So this is what we're trying to understand. Uh, obviously this doesn't constitute a proof because I'm just looking at examples here uh, and I'm trying to prove this for, for any n and that's a positive integer. So how do I do this by induction? Well, now that you understand the whole sets, members, subsets thing, let's start our regular old proof by induction. Let's uh, first start off with our base case. What is the base case? Now, I think I might have said positive integers before, which is a bit sneaky. I really should have said you can have, as we have just demonstrated with the empty set, you can have a set with zero members. So I guess that means that n equals zero would be the first time where this works. So I'm gonna test the n equals zero case, right? How many subsets are there if I have no members in my set? And I would say the subsets are just the empty set. There's nothing else that I can use to make a new subset. Can I confirm the uh, result that I'm trying to prove here for the base case? And the answer is yes, I can. Um, two to the power of zero, that's my two to the power of n, that equals one, which is indeed the number of subsets that I found just above. So therefore I can say, yes, this is true for the base case, namely n equals zero. Okay, wonderful. Now we then uh, progress. We want to say, well, what happens when we assume that this actually works for some arbitrary value of, uh, of n, so, which I'm going to call k. So I'm going to say, I'm going to assume true for n equals k. And 
I guess what would that look like? I, I want to sort of do something like this, right? I want to list out, uh, list out all of the sets, um, subsets I should say, and then I want to make a statement about those subsets in relation to <clears throat> this thing I'm trying to prove, right? So what would it look like to list these things out? I guess I would say the subsets of <clears throat> our K member set R. So I want to list out all of the subsets in a systematic way, just like I did up here, just to make sure I don't miss any, right? So uh, where should I begin? Well, I guess uh, the first subset I thought about was the subset with everything in it, right? So what would that look like for us? Well, if my subset has K members in it, I guess it would start off with A and then B and then C, and it would go all the way up to K, right? So this has um, all of the members, all K of them in the set. That's one of the subsets. What would the next one down have, the next row, right? Well, I went from having, say, uh, two members down to one, down to zero, and this would be three down to two down to one, right? So what I would have is not the subset with all of them is in it, but the subset with everything except for one, right? So for example, um, I'd still start off with A and B and C, but then I would end at the, the last one. I was going to write K minus one, which I could, um, but I could just as easily, just to keep things like uh, you sort of sensible for us, I could say it ends at J. That's the term before K, right? Um, that's one of the subsets which has uh, K minus one members in it. Uh, and then there's other ones, right? Um, for example, maybe I leave off A. Um, I could write it as B and then C and then D and that goes up to K. Um, I could leave out B instead, so that would be A and then C and then D all the way up to K. And uh, this actually goes on forever, right? Well, not quite forever, but until I've got all of them there. And I don't know how many there are because I don't know how many uh, sets, uh, members there are. It's an arbitrary K. Then I would keep on going down. Um, at some point, just like I did up here, I would end up with the uh, sets which have two members in them. So, you know, it might be A and B then I suppose we could make, that's a really bad curly brace, A and C, A and D. I could of course combine, uh, you know, dot, dot, dot. I could combine B with all of the other ones. So I've already got A and B. I could have B and C, B and D, and so on. And then lastly, you know, I guess the final one would be J and K, right? And then. I'm, I'm almost at the end there. I have all of the subsets which have just one member in them. So there's A, there's B, there's C. I think my curly braces are progressively getting worse. Uh, and then I would end with K. And then lastly, this is the uh, all of the subsets with one member in it. I would complete with the subset that has no members in it, the empty set. Okay, so here are all my subsets of the K member set, uh, all of them. I've tried to, tried to list them out with lots of copious um, ellipses. Now what I can say is from the inductive hypothesis or the inductive hypothesis is that the total number of subsets, total number should write, is two to the n, but in this case, we've got n equals k. So two to the power of k. This this is my assumption that if I take all the subsets of this K member set, all of these, total them up, count them, I should end up with two to the K, which was indeed what we verified over here. Uh, and we did it for the empty set as well. Okay, so there is my N equals K assumption. How do I prove this for N equals K plus one? So prove for N equals K plus one. Um, what we're required to prove is that uh, K plus one member set has two to the power of K plus one subsets. Okay, so here I'm going to try and very directly use uh, the hint that I was given up above, right? When I add this uh, new K plus one member, okay, the subsets will either not contain that new K plus one member, which is to say um, it's inclusive of all of these, they're all going to be included, um, or there's going to be um, 
it does contain, right? So either I don't contain them, which I've already counted, um, by assumption that's two to the K, or it does include it, which means I need to sort of form that list, right? So I can say um, proof the subsets of, or the subsets, uh, I'm just gonna say the subsets include uh, subsets with um, the next term along, which I'm gonna call it L. Um, I guess I'm gonna say, maybe I'll put that here, new member is L, just so I can refer to it. There's gonna be the subsets that uh, include subsets without L and with L, right? Now by assumption, here's me using the inductive hypothesis, right? By assumption, the subsets, or the total number of subsets without L, I have already counted because those are the ones up to K. Um, is two to the power of K, right? Then I can say um, the subsets with L, what would they actually look like? Well, the subsets with L would be, and what I can do is I can just create um, this copy here. Sorry, this is a little bit cheap, right? And I'm going to just adjust each one ever so slightly to include L in it. So we start with this one here, the big one. Uh, let's call this comma L. And then I've got the first one and I'm gonna add L to all the other ones as well. So I can put L into this one. I can put L into this one. And I hope what you're seeing here is once I've gone through this entire process, how many subsets will I have? I'm gonna get a bit lazy. I'm just gonna put this up here, comma L, comma L, comma L, and so on. Uh, A and L, B and L, C and L, K and L, and then I will move this guy for the empty set. The empty set and then plus L. How many sets are there going to be, or subsets rather, within this list? And the answer is exactly the same number that you started with because you haven't added extra sets, you've just taken those existing sets and stuck L inside, right? So I can say there are, and this is again from the assumption, there are two to the K subsets including L because that's how I generated all of these subsets. Therefore, um, the total number of subsets will include the ones without L, that's two to the K, the ones with L, that's also two to the K, that's two times two to the K, which is two to the K plus one uh, by index laws as required. So, um, I hope that made sense of how we were going to use the structure of induction, move from the K to the K plus one step. Um, and I'm using this hint to try and divide up, you know, this K plus one uh, member set. How do I connect it to the K member set? And the answer is to say the K member set is literally half of the number of subsets that you get.